Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I am so excited to be doing a collab tag video. I am collabing with Bougie Brie here on YouTube. She is one of my best friends that I've made here on YouTube. She is seriously one of the most badass people who has an amazing makeup collection. And we talk and text all the time, and she brought up the idea of really wanting to do, like, a top favorites kind of palette tag where like you go and you pick your favorite brights or you pick your favorite neutrals and we were talking back and forth and I thought like why don't we try to like line that up with the seasons and do like a palette seasons tag and so that's what we're doing today. So what we're gonna do is talk about each season fall spring summer and winter and talk about the favorite palettes we have in our collection that remind us of those seasons. <laughs> so we said anywhere between three and five palettes per season um, so I've got all of my palette lined up here. I've got quite a few palettes. I also have all of them listed down below, but let's go ahead and jump in. And I'll also have Bougie Bree's YouTube channel and her video in this tag listed in the description and in the first pinned comment down below. So where to start, where to start? Of course, with my favorite season, let's we'll start with fall. I have these sticky notes that look like ramen noodles, so I put this on the fall pile. Let's jump in with the quintessential fall palette that is unfortunately discontinued now but this is the ColourPop Good Sport palette. I've done quite a few videos on my channel of this palette but this just live breathe screams fall. I love this palette. I love the color story. I love the shades. This is like the original good color pop formula. I have heard about like the more recent limited edition collections that those shadows and those palettes are not the original good formula and that they are kind of declining in quality which is a shame because their original quality and their palettes and their shades are so good and this honestly should have never been limited edition i mean unfortunately the majority of color pop is now limited edition but this was such a like, unique fantastic palette that i, I will cherish forever <laughs> just wanted you to know how to deal with this oh Sorry, my boss just texted me. I got distracted. <laughs> I am off work today, but yeah. Uh, da, da, da. Next, let's go with a little quad that I absolutely adore. This is from Midas Cosmetics, and this is the Pumpkin Spice Latte Quad. I believe I have a Spotlight on Petite Palettes. Also, by the way, I'm going to run out of tags. You can only have five tags per video on YouTube, so if I keep saying, oh, I'll throw something up in the comments, or I'll throw something up in the cards, I might not be able to add it. Um, I'll do my best to add it in the description box, but if not, if you go straight to the actual channel, my channel on YouTube, there is a little search bar for my channel. If you search any of these eyeshadow palettes, all the videos with that palette in it should pop up. So just to give you just a little heads up there in case I happen to forget or not be able to include every video. But I did a Spotlight on Petite palettes with this and the other quad from the coffee collection that I got, but this is just perfect. This is literally pumpkin spice. Like there are other things in my collection, uh, tutorials and everything that say they're pumpkin spice, but this is like literally pumpkin spice. It is, they're stunning. They're pigmented. They are beautiful. And I'm saying this as someone who doesn't really reach for quads or duos or trios all at all or often enough. So for this to be something I keep reaching for over and over, you know it has to be fantastic. Next for fall, we have a e.l.f. palette, and this is the Mad for Matte 2 palette. And this is, like the name says, an all-matte palette, but these shades are just quintessential fall. You've got the oranges, you've got some like burnt sienna kind of neutrals, you've got a nice matte black and a purple. I feel like this purple and orange just really make fall. Like it makes you think October, like spooky fall leaves, my room. <laughs> But this is um, one of the best e.l.f. palettes I think I've ever tried. I think their best palettes are the ones that are in this packaging, the 10 pans. Because I've tried a couple of their other eyeshadows that aren't in this 10 pan kind of packaging. And the formulas are not the same. They're not as good. This is fantastic. And I would really recommend this one. Especially if you're looking for like a nice like staple palette. Because you can also use this as your go-to every day if you're, you know, working online and you need something to look good on a webcam or if you're going into an actual office and you need something that's kind of neutral because you can use this as your base and then you can bring in like new like shimmers, liquid shadows, everything to work with it. But this is just a, such a good like staple and it's really affordable. Last but certainly not least for fall, we have a Juvia's Place palette and this is the Tribe palette. This just gives me all the fall vibes we've got these beautiful greens some deep blues we've got the oranges i hope you can't hear that it sounds like someone's using a chainsaw but it's raining who was doing that outside i should check that later but <laughs> this is just giving me all the fall vibes i absolutely adore this palette and i love 
I just, I really love Juvia's Place. I believe, like, out of all of the eyeshadow palettes that I own, I'm pretty sure Juvia's Place is one of the top of brands that I own the most of. I have at least six or seven palettes from Juvia's Place. Their formula is amazing, they're super affordable, and I love their color stories. Like, when they put this together, this is, it's really unique, it's gorgeous, uh, and it just screams fall to me. And moving on from fall, let's jump to winter. So I have four palettes here, the first of which is a Pat McGrath palette. And this is the holiday palette from, I believe, 2018. This is the Mothership Sublime Bronze Temptation. And this, to me, screams winter because of the red and the green for, like, Christmas. Um, this is also, of course, being a holiday palette. It reminds me of winter. And I actually had, like, Mm, some inklings of wanting to use this as my 2021 pen that palette but I'm, I'm pretty set now I know which palette I want to pan it's not going to be this one but it's it's a really pretty palette I'd say the, the packaging is a bit ostentatious like it is pretty annoying if I'm being really honest and like trying to show it like it's so reflective and everything it's kind of a pain in the ass but <laughs> the shades are really pretty and if I were to associate this with a season I would think like the nutcracker like this is this is winter and I don't believe I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but the way I picked these, I literally sat down in front of my eyeshadow palette bookshelf and I just, I went through every palette and I had a notebook and I, was, I had each season listed and the first palettes that I opened and I came across that reminded me of each season, I wrote down and that's how we got here. The next palette that reminds me of winter is another one from Juvia's Place and this is the Deuce palette or the Douce palette, um, but this is another bright one that you wouldn't like at first glance really think of it as winter but like these like light kind of pastels the green is just screams kind of like Christmassy New Year's to me I don't know like looking at this and especially this white shade it's kind of a duochrome pinky shift this just reminds me of like maybe not like December winter but like January winter like when it's so snowed enough and it's no longer like the cute December snow, it's like January snow, but you're, you're still beautiful. You know, you're just kind of sick of it by that point. I don't know why I'm explaining it that way, but that's what this reminds me. This reminds me of like January into February. You've got the pinks. It's like Valentine's Day and depending on where you are. I'm in the Northeast here in the U.S. So it, it'll snow up and through like March. Um, that's kind of why this, this speaks late winter to me, not early winter, like the other two palettes or the other palette. I misspoke. There's only one other palette before this one in winter. <laughs> Next we have a palette from Ace Beauté and this is the Oceanic palette and this... Now I, I would say it's mainly the blues here that remind me of winter but the greens really remind me of like late winter like March. To me this is like a March palette. You've got the blues, you've got the nice tones in here, then you've got the greens so I'm going to peek through in like March slash April. I don't know. This really reminds me of like a really nice like late winter just because those are those pretty blues especially like this blue and this blue they're so gorgeous and this is a really pigmented palette too i need to do more looks with this palette i just don't reach for it as often which i'm not sure why i should pick this in my next shop my stash but this is a gorgeous palette and those blues and like the darker greens remind me of late winter now, the next palette is actually one I'm pretty sure I'm going to be decluttering soon. Probably going to give it to a cousin of mine. But as I was looking for winter palettes, I really couldn't pick anything else. And this is the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blue Blood Palette. Of course, if you missed my um, entire Pan That Palette series where I'm panning blood sugar from Jeffree Star Cosmetics, I'll leave that playlist up in the cards for sure. And I just want to make that disclaimer here. I do not support Jeffree Star Cosmetics. There's quite a few brands I don't support anymore, but I bought this before I came to the realization that I did in my Pan That Palette journey. So I still have this, but like I said, I don't really reach for it, but like you can't deny that this is winter in a palette. It is. It's blues, it's whites, it's got some light pinks. It's actually a really nice color story. But even then, like, I barely touch this palette. And you can tell, like, which shades I really used. There's, <laughs> like, three of them. So uh, probably by the end of this year, I think I'm going to declutter it and give it to a cousin of mine. But lo looking through my palette collection, this was the most winter palette that I could find. Next, we have summer. Now, I have to say, summer is, like, my least favorite season. <laughs> ever but i went through my collection and i found quite a few palettes that did remind me of summer the first of which being um from nomad cosmetics and this is the lake como palette just first look at this cover art it 
that screams summer. But then the color story in here, it just, it's, it reads as a beautiful summer at the lake, which is like perfect for a summer palette. You've got like these lighter shades up here, you've got these beautiful blues, and then you've got these stunning greens in the middle. And for a nine pan palette, this is such a great color story. <laughs> it really, really impressed me. I got this in a Tribe Beauty box. Um, it's kind of really interested now in more Nomad cosmetics. This is my first palette I ever tried from Nomad. Next, we technically have like a little bit of a tie, but I brought both of the palettes in just to mention both of them. And of course, this couldn't be like a summer palette collection without either the Yes Please from ColourPop or the Sunset palette from Natasha Denona. So the Yes Please was ColourPop's first and arguably best palette and it's got these beautiful oranges reds yellows i love the formula the only thing i don't like about this palette is the packaging because it gets so dirty but i can deal with it <laughs> and i have dealt with it so this is the yes please and that came out not too long after this palette shook the world this was my first natasha palette and it is right here arguably also stunning I really like Natasha shadows, but I keep saying over and over, I don't really think they're worth that high price point. So if you can get them on sale or get the minis, they're definitely worth it. But like, I, I itch whenever I see that price. I think I've only paid full price for one or two Natasha palettes. Uh, this one I did not. I definitely got this during the 20% off sale a couple of years ago when I was finally able to get my hands on it. But I have to say the color story is fantastic. You do not need to get Natasha if you just want this color story because the Yes Please palette is basically the same shades. It's just really like the luxe experience you're getting with Natasha. And this is my first Natasha palette. So to me, it was worth it. It's sentimental and everything. But if you're looking for just the color story, you can just go with the color pop. Next for summer palettes, we have another ABH palette, and this is the Riviera palette. Let's just take a moment to appreciate this packaging. This is prime summer packaging, and my family is doing something in the kitchen downstairs. Great. But this is perfect summer packaging. Like, I'm pretty sure I've got either flip-flops or a cute outfit or, like, a bag in the same pattern. And then you open it, and you have these stunning, like, ABH palettes really are stunning color story and I think this is one of the first like big colorful palettes we got from ABH. You've got some beautiful blues, pinks, this periwinkle. Oh my god it's almost like a teal and like this light purple. Ah. These shimmers are literally to die for. They're fantastic. This palette is gorgeous and I need to bring this out more often. Again this is something I want to like bring into a shot in my stash because this is stunning and I'm so glad I got this palette. <laughs> Sidebar, I really like doing like these kind of tag videos that make you go through your collection because just like this, I'm rediscovering my collection and finding palettes that have been kind of like pushed to the bottom of the bookshelf or just not really used as much. And like, this is definitely one of those palettes. I love that palette. Last but not least for summer, we've got a big palette from Dominique Cosmetics. This is the Rustic Glam palette. And to me, this really made me think of like late summer like late summer going into autumn you've got these beautiful blues you got pinks and purples but then you've got like this orange and this green that really make me think of like early fall this is like the perfect transition palette from summer to fall so like we've got summer and then we've got a little bit of early fall you got some be pretty neutrals in here and i have to say one downside is that these shades are not really as pigmented as I was kind of hoping they would be. You definitely have to build up these shades, but I do like the color story and the packaging. The packaging has a nice heft to it and a nice big mirror. And you, you can work with the shades, you just have to build them up a little bit, and you definitely need a glitter glue for these shimmers. So that is it for summer. We are on to our last season, which is spring. The first palette that just screams spring to me is from Kylie Cosmetics, and this was from the Weather Collection. This is the Calm Before the Storm palette, and these are just bright pastel. Like, this screams Easter, this screams spring. I love this palette, and I love the way it's set up, kind of like a Lorac Pro palette, where it's like all mattes on top and all shimmers on the bottom, and they kind of match. I just, I really like that format. It looks really pretty, and it gives me you know, great ways to work with this palette. I just really like this and I was kind of surprised because I wasn't really expecting too much out of Kylie shadows at the time. Next, we actually have another Kylie palette, I know, but this one I adore and it just reminds me more of spring. And this is the Peach Extended palette. And this palette, I love peach shadows, especially peach shadows with a an orange undertone as opposed to like a pinky undertone. So these um, peaches are more orange leaning and they're just so pretty. 
This is the ultimate peach palette in my opinion. I actually did a video a ways back called Battle of the Peach Palettes where I compared this to like a ColourPop palette. And in my experience, this has been like the best peach palette ever. I also got this one on sale. I did not spend full price on this. I probably got it for around $22 a while ago, but I love this peach palette and it reminds me of just like, again, transitions into like spring into summer. This is kind of what I'm getting from this palette. Next, we have a palette that I got because it was super hyped on YouTube and I was surprised that it, it basically did live up to the hype. This is the Midas Cosmetics Flower Balm palette. And this, just looking at it, screams spring. Can you see why? You've got these beautiful glitters. I will say I do not like using glitters on my lid. I will only use them on my inner corner closer to the bridge of my nose and all the way up here on my brow bone. I will not use them on my lids. But this palette is gorgeous. I believe they did repackage it, so the packaging is going to be different than the one that I have here. But the shades are just, they're stunning. And they're bright and they're pigmented and you can get so many pretty looks out of this. I'm really glad that I got this, though I kind of wish I had waited until they had the new packaging, but I still really adore this palette. Oh, and we're here at the end. At the very end, the last palette that I have for spring is actually a palette that I supported in a Kickstarter a while ago, and this is from the brand UKMA, I believe, and this is the Unfiltered palette. So I did back like a Kickstarter a while ago, and it took a while for this palette to come in, but... This screams spring to me specifically for the shades on the corners. I love this trio. This reminds me of just Easter. This is kind of more fall, but it looks really pretty. And we've got like primary colors down here. This is just a really like unique palette. The way it's laid out, the shades they picked. I have to admit, I have not been using this as much as I honestly should for how much it costs and how long it took me to get it. But I really do want to bring this back out. It's good quality. I used it quite a few times when I first got it and then kind of put it away and kind of forgot about it. Um, it is big. It's about the size of the Zodiac palettes from BH Cosmetics, just to give you a little size reference. But it's really pretty. <laughs> and it reminds me of, you know, fresh spring colors. So that is everything in this palette season's tag. Don't forget to check out Bougie Bree's channel and her video down below. And please, this is open to anyone who would like to do this tag. Go through your collection, pick out your favorite palettes for each season, and make sure you tag Bree and I either here on YouTube or on Instagram with your choices. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.